Hello, everyone. Um, great to see you all here. Um, so my name is Karina Seljak, and I'm one half of Seljak brand, the other half being my sister, Samantha. We make closed loop merino blankets out of factory floor waste, and we want to prove that waste is valuable to divert it from landfill. So we founded Seljak brand in 2016. I, as a trained fashion designer, and my sister as a social entrepreneur, felt like we were equipped and indeed obliged to respond to the issue of how unsustainable it is how we make and use things. Sam studied a double degree in business economics and journalism at QUT, and I did fashion and advertising. So together we're a bit of a yin and yang team and thought we were the right people to start to work on this issue. We came across the mill in Tasmania um, at the start of 2015, which we found that they had a practice of re-spinning and weaving their offcuts into new blankets. They weren't a highlight nor a commercial product for the mill, um, which, we, which weaves the finest merino in Australia, um, and therefore they prioritise that luxury product. But this was the restorative um, story of design that we wanted to tell. Um, and we knew that consumers were becoming more conscious of the things they buy. The fashion industry is one of the most polluting industries in the world. In terms of waste alone, globally 50 million tonnes of waste goes to landfill each year. In Australia, it's 23 kilos of clothing per person per year, which and the landfill emits hard, uh, harmful methane gases into the atmosphere um, because they're a combination of organic and uh, polyester fibres. So we commissioned the mill to make blankets and we drew on the circular economy model um, in terms of uh, the practices that we were seeing in case studies and also design principles to inform our model which moves away from the take-make-waste model that we saw earlier um, into a circular one where waste is used as a resource. We fundamentally believe that waste is a design flaw and that people would agree with us if they could see a good example of how things could be different. We thought a carefully considered product would be made of existing materials and would be recyclable because every resource is too precious to lose. It would be durable, it would be beautiful, and it would be useful, which is quite the standard. But frankly, for us, bringing anything less than that into the world isn't worth it. So our first product is the closed loop recycled wool blanket. It was made from a 70% recycled merino wool and 30% combination of mohair, cashmere, cotton, and polyester for strength. We take the offcuts from the factory floor, which is like a um, textile production byproduct. We rag them and we spin them and weave them into new blankets. At the end of their useful life, we can take the blankets back and reincorporate re them into the manufacturing process, hereby closing the loop. So it's not just a textile design or a product design, it's systems design, where every aspect of the life cycle of the object is considered, including the materials used, where the materials come from, uh, how long the customer will have the product, what they'll do with the product when they no longer want it, and so on. We think that businesses should be taking responsibility for the whole life cycle of their products. The blankets are lightweight, they're insulating, they're odour resistant, ma machine washable, they're cosy enough for indoors and durable enough for outdoors. Blankets made at the mill in Tasmania are known to outlive their owners. And before remanufacture, which is resource intensive itself, Longevity is key in designing a sustainable product. So since we've launched, we've tracked our impact. We've diverted over 
uh, 8,000 kilos of textiles waste from landfill and donated over $25,000 to the Asylum Seeker Resource Centre in Melbourne, um, plus some blankets. Uh, we speak with a lot of people about closed loop design and business practices um, so that other people can see that it's possible to participate in these systems too. But in systems design um, and, you know, on this journey, there have been a range of challenges. Um, we proved that the recycling concept was so desirable that the mill we were working with started to run out of its waste product. Um, plus, our supplier introduced their own range of recycled wool blankets because they could see that they were valuable. So it was, there, there are interesting things that happen um, when waste is incorporated back into the economy. Um, and we had to face those challenges. We also were making a product that um, is useful in the Australian winter when it's warm so, so much, to, like so, um, yeah, most of the year it's warm. So we needed something more lightweight. So we needed to diversify our supplier and also our product range. In 2019, we introduced our European suppliers um, and our range that was based on artworks. Uh, this one here is the June blanket, which is made from uh, the waste of 16 mills around Europe, which is pulled together and woven in Lithuania. This design is inspired by the Central Australian desert and is called the June blanket. And this is the loon blanket. The loon is um, actually a combination of post-consumer waste, so old sweaters um, and other wool materials that are transformed in mills in Italy into a new yarn. These are then woven in the Lithuanian mill we work with. It's a 92-year-old mill. It has jacquard looms and is able to produce really high-quality um, products with intricate designs. Um, and at this point, um, such equipment doesn't exist in Australia, nor certainly the scale. But over the years, we've had dozens of Australian businesses reach out to work with their waste. We realised that our success is the progress of the whole um, textiles industry in designing out waste, and our circle of influence is mostly in Australia. So we started to look closer to home to continue to expand our product range. We discovered a mill in Geelong had shelves full of dead stock material. Mills are left with dead stock yarn if they've over-ordered or if their customers change their mind about quantities or designs last minute. The yarn sits unused in the warehouse, gathering dust, um, eventually getting moth-eaten, and at that point it's rendered useless and gets sent to landfill. I'm not sure if you can see the tiny little holes in that yarn there. Um, that's, they're so tiny, but the second that that happens, that yarn has been broken, um, so it needs to go to landfill. So we partnered up with, um, with the mill and we talked to them about um, what colours of dead stock they have and what quantities they have, um, which yarn, which fibre types go together, and we kind of do a bit of a Tetris to design a product from what they've got left over. This one is um, called the Sunbeam Blanket. It's uh, inspired by rainbows after summer storms on the Sunshine Coast. Um, it is made from waste and it retails for $349. This one is our Dancing Daisies Blanket, which is our first foray into new merino wool, which is produced in a close to zero waste system at a new knitting outfit in the Yarra Valley in Victoria. This is so that we can make to order locally and we're also tapping the uh, technology that is knitting, um, using knitting machines that only use the resources required to produce the product. There is no byproduct from this style of knitting. It's also allowed us to um, uh, 
work in biological loops. Because there's no plastic in this product, it means that it can be composted at the end of its useful life. So what we've spoken mostly um, about so far is industrial, um, closing the loop um, industrially. This is now working on the biological side um, in, yeah, the circular economy framework. So there are many ways to collaborate to move towards less wasteful and more regenerative practices. So we now have around 5,000 5, active customers, um, 35,000 followers on social media with stockists like David Jones and Iconic, um, and we're in the uh, award-winning Paramount House in Sydney which is pictured here, Spices Eco Retreats in Queensland, um, and also in the high-end cabins um, on Tasmania's Overland Track. We won the Design Files Sustainability Award in 2019 and judged the same category in the subsequent year. Um, the winner was Good Citizens Eyewear, and they make eyewear out of 100% recycled materials from ocean waste. Um, so together we've really created a movement um, around waste um, and making waste into a resource, but also making waste into a beautiful resource that inspires others. Working in a circular system is more about just waste, particularly because remanufacturing is, an of its, is in and of itself energy intensive. Our work is also around valuing the products that we, also, that we already have in our lives. So we provide our customers with the tools to repair and care for their blankets, which can be translated into the other um, textiles um, that we have, including clothing. We've developed instructional videos on how to repair um, your woolens and jean jackets and all that kind of thing. Um, and this embroidery technique was inspired by um, kintsugi, which is a Japanese uh, repair technique um, using gold um, and lacquer to repair cracks um, and breaks in ceramics. Um, these ceramics become more valuable in their repaired state um, than they were whole. Um, and we think that's a beautiful metaphor for, um, yeah, caring and repairing products and seeing um, the things in our lives beyond something that can be wasted. Um, and that's all from me today. I'll be um, outside with a stall um, so you can touch and feel the blankets and um, see what different waste streams feel like as converted into new products. And, um, yeah, I'd love to have a chat. Thanks, everyone.